All right, so I have two random shaped objects right now, uh, a rectangle and a circle. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how these uh, two very boring pieces of wood can look really cool by pressing one button in QLab. We're gonna talk about how to make masks. Oh yes, masks are so much fun. Uh, take that top piece of wood that I have right here and that boring piece of wood becomes a three-dimensional surface that looks so cool. Uh, I actually use a round screen in my show to project a moon and uh, the moon looks completely real because it's hanging in the middle of the stage uh, where there's no other video screens around. Uh, I just lost the light. <laughs> but. Um, Anyway, so I'm going to actually show you how to use masks. It's really, really simple to do, and I didn't use these for years, and I don't know why, because they're so much fun. But to give you some examples of things that you can do with masks, um, check this out. If, uh, if you want to play two different videos, uh, as you can see, the video up top is not distorted. It is perfectly um, in the right ratio. It's just simply not projecting out of the object I'm hitting right now. Um, same video down here as up there. Obviously one is a uh, different shape. Uh, another very, very cool thing that you can do with masks is check this one out. This is super cool. So let's say you want to do, um, let's say we're going to do this one right here. So that's going to play uh, this video down here, the background video, and then Jenna is in the front. Um, once again, three videos playing. That is an alpha channel video. Uh, but now, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to fire my live camera mask. And now I actually have a video screen in a circular mask that I've created that is now projecting on top of the video graphics. And this is the new way that I'm doing my close up magic throughout my show. I create different imageries, um, imageries? <laughs> different images uh, in Photoshop or Pixelmator. And then I actually do my close up magic through those masks. And depending on what uh, routine I'm doing, depends on the shape of the mask and why the, ma the mask is there. There's always a reason why the mask is there. Um, so let's hit stop and show you how to do it right now. All right, so um, to create a mask, I've done all the work already, but I want to show you what to do. Uh, first thing you're going to need to do is to create a, a physical mask in Pixelmator or Photoshop or some other um, editing software like that. So I have Pixelmator here. I like Pixelmator a lot. And uh, I type the word in masks. Now to do this, when you start from scratch, um, let's see, get rid of the whole entire layer. Oh, I can't. I got to go here. There we go. Okay. So when you open up your, your graphic, it usually looks like this. Let's add some text right here. Um, masks. And we're going to change that uh, to make sure it's completely white. And we're going to change the font a little bit, uh, size a little bit lower. Awesome. And then uh, let's make a shape of some sort. Let's do uh, what shapes we got here. Uh, that's a line. Here we go. Let's do a uh, star shape. Hey. Let's put a star right there. And then I think we can control yeah, how much we want to see there like that. Okay. Cool. And then what we're going to do is we don't care about the stroke. Uh, one is get rid of our backdrop because we need to see uh, a PNG file out of this. So now we're going to go ahead and... and um, do the fill. So the fill is going to be color and we're going to do it in white and the black background will do nothing. Uh, so let's get rid of the shadow because that won't do anything at all. Um, and that is our masks. Let's see if we can make that nice and big. Cool. And then we're going to export that as a PNG file. Remember anything that's white We'll let the, uh, the the video or camera shine through, the service shine through. Anything that is uh, black or um, alpha channel, it will not go through. Uh, I know you think it'd be the opposite way around, right? But it's not. Okay, so star uh, mask. Okay, so I'm just putting that on my desktop. Now, when you create a new surface, uh, like I've done here, uh, the surface that I created um, is that surface area here and I added a mask right here where it says masks 
I've added a mask into that area to create that surface. So we're going to create a new surface right now, like that. And then we're going to go and add the mask by clicking on the mask area, double clicking. And if we go to my desktop, um, most recent is going to say star mask. Okay. Now, unfortunately, you cannot see this in uh, audition window. If you try to use the audition window, nothing will happen. Uh, it will look like this. Hmm. It doesn't even go in the audition window even when I have projector plugged in. It's so bizarre. So unfortunately, you cannot use audition window when testing out masks. Um, you have to actually have the device plugged in. I lost another light. <laughs> we need to go to bed, people. It is late. My lights are like, I'm out of here. Um, okay. Anyway, so, <laughs> so basically, um, we are going to try that mask right now. And that's the mask, which is obviously way too big. Um, but we can go ahead and start to use pinning to get that to fit into that um, either top or bottom surface, wherever you want to put it. Um, it. It does take some messing around with to get the mask to work. Uh, I'll be honest with you, if you're using a full video screen, which most people are, and you know the video surface is a 1280 by 700 or 800 or whatever it is, uh, 1280 by 800 usually, um, or 1920 by 1080, make your mask in that dimension. Because when the mask comes in, it's going to be perfect. Uh, instead of having to mess around with it like I'm doing right now. Uh, and that's because I don't know what this area is uh, on, on pixels. I could find out, but I'm just too lazy. But all I have to do it, I have to do is keep messing around with that with these corner pins until I finally get it exactly where I want it. And I can continue to manipulate that a little bit more until it's like that. And that is going to be our mask. Now, uh, we're going to label this star mask. And what we can do now is we can uh, go into the previous mask that I already had. Let's put this down here. Uh, and we're going to use that circle blur mask that I created. We're going to go ahead and put that as a background. So that is our mask that I've already created for the circle using the same exact procedure. I went and drew a circle in Pixelmator. I attached it to this area and I kept moving it around until I got a perfect circle right there. Uh, now let's go ahead and add the, uh, let's try the golden stage graphic. And let's add the golden stage graphic to the new star mask. Unfortunately, you do not see that here. You have to only see it in your projector. When we fire that, dun, da, da, dun, we now have a mask that projects only that imagery through the mask you've just created. And of course, you can do multiple uh, lines over and over and over and over again with it. It is so, so, so cool. So now we're combining masks uh, with um, layers and, um, and different surfaces, which gives us so many different cool options to go from and to use in the show and the live camera aspect of it is also so cool because you can um, of course you could uh, drag a live camera in here which you think by now I know where that is uh, we can go ahead and attach it to star mask and now we will have the most bizarre um, live camera <laughs> hello there we are and, uh, and you can see that I can move around that mask. Now, if I choose uh, to fire that cue, it's gonna go on top. So as we said before, we need to go in here if we wanna prevent that, and saying the star mask will always be on top, and the, um, the what is the other mask? Circle blur. Circle blur mask is going to always be on the bottom uh, by going in here and choosing bottom. Okay, so now we can fire the blue background and we also can fire the uh, golden stage graphic on top of that and then we can stop the blue background and when we fire the blue background again, it will remain in the back. It will not jump to the front because I fired it after because I told that surface to always stay, anything on that surface, to stay in the back. 
So now we're controlling the layers, we're controlling the surfaces, and if we go in here to rock and roll, we can of course still fire that rock and roll cue on the bottom. Uh, I mean, it becomes so much fun. So uh, have fun with those, have fun with masks, and definitely, definitely try to incorporate some of this stuff in your show because uh, it'll take it to an entirely new level. Have fun, guys.